Thessalonians uh, 1 through 5, the people of God, uh, the people of God. And, and it is my intention today to close it out, to be God's will with the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, lesson 6, I, I, I don't claim for this to be a climatic uh, end to the series, amen, somebody. But nonetheless, this is where we'll make our stopping post. The people of God, lesson six, the church of the living God. Amen. The church of the living God. Amen. Kendra, appreciate you. Amen. Fellas, appreciate you. Amen. 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 We need men to stand up. We need men to stand up. We thank God for a few that are standing on their solid too. Right. Amen. Let's keep on working. Let's keep on working. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 through 30 was read into our hearing. We'll start there. Y'all got your Bible? What kind of Bible you need? You got your ugly Bible? Amen. The one you don't mind writing in uh, so that we can study this morning and continue that study as you go home and meditate on God's word. The Bible there says in Acts chapter 20, beginning at verse 28, so guard yourselves. L listen to this uh, now. When we talk about the church of the living God, let me just go ahead on and put a pen right here, uh, that uh, the church of the living God uh, at that time when these letters were fashioned was the only church existent for the salvation of man. I want you to understand that and follow me in this lesson and, and, and maybe we'll get an understanding of uh, why the religious dynamic looks the way uh, that it does today. Amen? Here it says, guard yourselves and God's people. Yeah. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood. Let me go on ahead and lay this foundation that God is a spirit yeah. and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me go ahead on and drop a note on you that no man at no time have seen the Father. So when we talk about the church of the living God, who are we talking about? He's appointed you as leaders of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and folk act like they get tired of hearing about false teachers today. Let's see what they were talking about back then. I know that false teachers, like vicious wolves, any, any so-called uh, gospel preacher uh, that call himself a man of God and don't speak on false teachers, you better find out where he came from. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group, let's make it plain, even some men from the church will rise up and distort the truth. Why? In order to draw a following, to get some folks to go long with them. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 14. I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon, so that if I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God which is the pillar and foundation of truth. Without question, this, listen, listen, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels, announced to the nations, believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. The church of 
the living God. If your church wasn't founded by somebody that's still living, it don't belong to Christ. By faith, we know that this Christ is indeed the chosen Messiah who accomplished the scheme of redemption that was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world was laid. We understand that though he was a son, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. We have a great appreciation that he drank the bitter cup, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no possession of our own that we could offer to repay the Lord Jesus for stepping down from heaven, taking on the form of a helpless human, stepping in and taking our place on Golgotha's hill. The best we could possibly do is say thank you. The best we could possibly do is say thank you and give honor, praise, and glory with the way we live our lives before the everlasting God. Amen. Isaiah 53 and 3. The Bible says he was despised. Y'all heard this before. Yes, and rejected. A man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. Don't tell me that nobody knows what you're going through. Stop making excuses why you can't give yourself to God because of what you've been through. Honey child, be careful what you ask for because you probably hadn't faced your deepest grief yet. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Get ready to do what you want. You don't care. Yet, it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. We, we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. A punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole, whipped so we could be healed. All us like sheep have gone astray. We've left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sin of us all. When you look around and can't understand why this nation is falling apart, amen, somebody. Why they make the major issues, abortion and the border and the economy. God is not pleased with his creation. The Bible tells us that having no guile, no evil intentions, no deception in him. He died between two crooks on the cross. And on the third day became the first fruits of them that arise from the dead. Got up early Sunday morning from his weekend retreat with all power in his hand. Power over death, power over hell, power over sin and Satan, and power over the church. It's without doubt that the only begotten son of the almighty God, conceived by the spirit, born of a virgin, came to this wretched world to die for every one of our sins. But that's not all he did. He came to make the captives free. He came that a hope for the saving of our souls would become a reality. He came to save us both from ourselves and from the wrath of a loving God who hates to be rejected by his creation. Yes, Jesus saves. Yes, the sinner needs to be saved. 
Yes, the Christ is the answer to our sin problem. But how does he save? Oh, we got all kind of televangelists. Jesus saved, Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Man standing on the corner, Jesus saved, Jesus saved. If you're not going to tell me the whole story, shut up. How does he save? He saves through his church. Oh, folk don't like that. They don't like that. Preacher, what you saying? You taking the you taking the emphasis off of Jesus. Jesus put the emphasis on the church. Y'all quiet? Ephesians chapter three and verse ten. We've already looked at this. Ephesians three and ten. God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display His wisdom in its rich variety. To all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Verse 11 says, this was his eternal plan. Which he carried out through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are y'all with me this morning? We're talking about the church of the living God. We ain't talking about no building now. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, in Luke chapter 9, the master teacher foretells his death, leading in, into what we recognize as the transfiguration. Shortly following the Lord being transformed, Peter, one of his apostles, would have a grave misunderstanding concerning tabernacle establishment. Are y'all with me? Let's read it. Let's read it. Jesus saves, but how? We know faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He is the word made flesh. We need to listen to Jesus if we're going to be saved. Jesus saves through the church. I dare anybody to prove it's not correct. Luke chapter 9, verse 21. Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. He says, the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things. Says he will be rejected by the elders. Listen to this. The, the religious leaders... Those at the helm of religion were the ones who rejected Jesus Christ. Yes. We think anybody that claimed to be religious is on the Lord's side. What's wrong with us? He will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Yes. He will be killed, but on the third day he will rise from the dead. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you, I think he's talking to us today, amen, somebody. Uh, this okie doke Christianity ain't going to get it. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily. Y'all got your cross today? You don't lay it down on Sunday. Some of us try to lay it down so we can go club hopping. You don't lay it down on Saturday evening. I mean, lay it down for a few minutes while I cuss out old boy over him. You don't lay it down. Pick it up. Every day. Follow me. It looked like you might be able to lay it down and go to night night. But in the morning, you better pick it back up. Y'all not be doing nothing while you sleep. Amen, somebody. If you try, listen to what he says, y'all. And this is where we miss the mark in the Lord's church many times. If you try to hang on to your life, yes. if you try to keep living the way you've been living, you're going to lose what little life you got. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. Amen. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world? But you are yourself lost 
and destroyed. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, when you go out there and preach another gospel, in other words, you're ashamed of what God gave. When you won't stand on the truth, you're ashamed of what God gave. Son of man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some standing right here will not die before they see the kingdom of God. That's the church. He said, I'm going to bring this thing into existence before y'all die, some of y'all. About eight days later, listen, Peter, uh, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain to pray. Y'all heard this before. Yeah. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed. His clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. Lord, have mercy. They were glorious to see, the writer says. And they were speaking about his exodus from this world, which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. That thing was so powerful, Peter and the others fell asleep. So, so, so sometimes if you preach, you preach, preaching might be too powerful. Folk got to go to sleep, amen, somebody. Peter and the others had fallen asleep. And when they woke up, they saw Jesus' glory. Two men standing with him. Moses and Elijah were starting to leave. Peter, look, see, 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 watch this, Peter. And, 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 and folk, listen, listen, folk try to do good things, but they don't know what they're doing. Are, are you with me? Peter, not even knowing what he was saying, blurted out. He said, ho, 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 before y'all walk off, Moses and, and Elijah. Hold on, I got to say something. See, 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 you're speaking out of turn, Peter. He didn't know no better. Come on, church, are y'all with me? He said, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Could you imagine seeing that? Could you imagine just living in the presence of Jesus, period? Amen, somebody. Amen. Seeing him work the miracles, seeing him walk on the water. Amen, somebody. Peter says, I'm so excited about Jesus that I want to do something. Let us make three shelters as memorials. The Bible just told us he didn't even know what he was saying. Listen, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them. And terror gripped them as the cloud covered them. Then a voice from a cloud said, this is my beloved son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice finished, Jesus was there alone. And they didn't tell anyone at the time what they had seen. Now, let me unpack this right quick. Y'all all right? Y'all in a hurry? You can't go to the park. You ain't no way. When Peter suggested to build or establish a shelter, a tabernacle, or a church for Moses and Elijah and the Christ, that would mean that they would start with three churches instead of one for the saving of man. Are y'all seeing this? There would be three churches which shared an equal power to the church of the living God and for the saving of mankind. Furthermore, the apostle Peter, nor the apostles or man of any stature or ethnicity could build the church of the living God based on the promise that Christ himself would build it. Thus, it was the sole responsibility. We're talking about the church of the living God. It was the sole responsibility of the son sent from heaven to bring to fruition that which was in the mind of God from the beginning. To set up his kingdom and to make known the mystery which is the church. It is not, nor will it ever be man's responsibility to create 
or establish a church for the purpose of salvation. Listen to me clearly. To do so, listen, to do so, either Christ would have to relinquish his role and duty to the church, or a mortal man must possess the power to strip the chosen one of God from being both Lord and Savior. God said, hush that foolishness, Peter, and listen to Christ Jesus. Just do what he says. Truly, it was God's design, and yet his desire that the church is responsible to teach Christ to the lost and dying world. There's no biblical proof nor authorization for mankind to make his own church. There's this doctrine running around that you can be saved in any church. So here's the question, and I want one of my brethren that's running this foolishness behind closed doors to stand up and be a man and say out of your mouth, that a man-made church has the same power and ability to save than the church that God gave. Then what you worshiping over there for then? What did Christ say about his church? Notice that before his recruitment of the first disciples, that the message of his ministry was the church. Are y'all with me? Why, why is the church under attack? Why do they want to remove the church from the process of salvation? Because that, that's what God chose to use for salvation. You take that out, then what do you have? Y'all quiet on me. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 17. The Bible says, from then on, Jesus began to preach. This was after he was tempted in the wilderness. At the start of his ministry, if you will, for lack of better terms, amen, somebody. This ministry started in heaven before he left, amen, somebody. From then on, Jesus began to preach. What did he preach? Maybe this was his, 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 his sermon title. Repent of your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven draws near. At the beginning of the Messiah's ministry, his message was about the church. Amen. Kingdom and the church are one and the same. Yes, sir. Back then, there was only one. Peter tried to make three, mm-hmm. but God said, no, one. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Amen. Come on, y'all. Yes, Matthew 16 records, beginning at verse number 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked his disciples, who do people say uh, that the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. One of of them. They say you one of them. Uh, He he, he was not uh, merely one of the prophets. Jesus Christ is that prophet. Y'all didn't get that. Mm -hmm. I ain't even going to say it again. Y'all didn't get it. It's gone. Then he asked them, who do you say I am? The ones that were with him. The ones that witnessed all that he had been doing. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. That word Messiah, Christos, it means the anointed one. The Messiah, the Christ, comes from the word cryo, the anointed one, the one who was to come. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say that you are Peter, which means a rock. And upon this rock, 
He said, upon myself, I will build my church. Y'all heard this before. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Now, the church won't be conquered. But if you align yourself with somebody else's church, it will be destroyed in the end. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. He gave this message to the disciples, the apostles. So then how do you have so-called church legislators still changing law today? Oh, y'all heard what's going on with the United Methodist Church. Huh? Some almost 200 uh, 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 denominations uh, attached to the, to the United Methodist Church have split off because their leaders have decided that we're in a new time and they're going to get some gay preachers. Oh, y'all ain't heard? They're going to honor gay marriage. There's no such thing as marriage when it don't have a man and a woman. Marriage is a gift from God. It represents Christ and the church. Christ wouldn't find himself married to another man that'd be blasphemy. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christos. Christ said, I am the anointed one. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It's my job to build the church that I'll make up of the obedient faithful. When is he going to do it? In the fullness of time. How is he going to do it? With his own blood. Why was he going to do it? On the old rugged cross. Why was he going to do it? Because there was none in heaven, none on earth, none pure, none holy, none right, none just that could be offered up for the sin of humanity. As the psalmist says, there's none righteous. No, not one. Once again, the church of the living God, are y'all listening? Was in the mind of God before he said, let there be light. If Christ had not been willing to humble himself, leave heaven's presence and dwell among men as a man, submit himself to the will of God, the church of the living God would have never existed. There would be no hope of salvation, as the Apostle Paul expressed in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 and 19, we of most folks will be miserable. Now, I need y'all sanctified folks to get this now. Somebody probably going to want to pull me to the side after I say this. Listen. The church of the living God came from heaven. You can't get in a church that was thought of on earth and it take you to heaven. It's some men that had good intentions. I could imagine they were living in a world without God where they saw people being murdered and raped and killed and nobody cared about his neighbor and they said, we need something better than this. Let's make a church. Not your job. Not your business. It is the vehicle of our salvation whose founder was wrapped in swaddling clothes just as the message of our hope was wrapped in him. In him and only him would be the authority to fulfill on earth what was established in heaven. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 8. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 8. The Bible there says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people. They, they were before the council. They said, Are we being questioned today 
because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you, oh, you can't be no weak need and yell back, amen, somebody. Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Y'all know who I'm talking about, right? The one you crucified. But God raised him from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures when it says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Listen, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Oh, some folk won't let you in the pool pit if you ain't been to college, amen, somebody. But then you send Joe College down there to the college and he come back and tear your church up with some false doctrine. They also recognize, now I'm not against education, but education can't supersede God's word, amen. And when he can take a, a, a lowly country boy with a GED, amen, born in Birmingham, raised in Carolina, traveled all over the earth, amen, going through circumstances with the family, God can bless you and give you the word of truth to preach to others. Without now theological degree on the wall, trust in him. He'll reveal it to you, amen, somebody. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed, standing right there among them, there was nothing. <laughs> amen, somebody. That make you want to brush your shoulders off, amen, somebody. But, but you can't get cocky, amen. It's God's word, amen, somebody. But I can imagine Jesus just brush his shoulders off because when you lay down that truth, amen, somebody, there's nothing. That can be said. Now you tell me that a man-made church is equal with the church that came from heaven. That Jesus died for with his own blood. Tell me that's the church of the living God and it be true according to the scriptures. Can't do it. So you get up there and you preach just like I preach. But then when you get in the corner with your buddies, you talk that other talk. Jesus is the chief builder. He's the only one that could construct, listen, and confirm the church. Men have been constructing churches since the early second century. Beginning with the Catholic Church, the mother of all denominations. Church, listen to me and go study for yourself. There are now more than 45,000 denominations worldwide. 45,000 different faiths all claiming to take you to heaven. And God didn't approve three. Let me break this off right quick. I didn't, I didn't even write this down in my notes. But let me, let me tell you something. Satan is the greatest copycat. So he's put a bunch of folks out there that look just like me. A bunch of folk that say amen just like what well, some of y'all say amen, amen. That sang. That got a building. They got a realm or a pastor or an elder, amen, somebody. Or a father or a rabbi, amen, somebody. And they've heard enough of our message that now they say we are the church of Christ. They say we are the church of the living God. 
but it has not been constructed by Christ, nor has it been confirmed by Christ. The church of the living God, the church of Christ. Oh, that's a bold statement. Now you went too far, preacher. You can't just claim your church. It's not mine. It's Christ. And I'm just so thankful and blessed to be a part of it. Amen, somebody. And I didn't come without a fight. But when I got tired of getting whooped because the truth was right there and I couldn't get around the truth, I couldn't go under the truth. I couldn't go over the top of the truth. Amen, somebody. I might as well walk into the truth. The Church of Christ is the only one that is traceable to the day of Pentecost. Let's talk about blood and water real quick. The church was, was purchased with his own blood. Y'all all right? Y'all got time? I'm trying to hear up now. I'm trying to hear up. It is good stuff. John chapter 19, beginning at verse number 17. John chapter 19. Listen to this now. They took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called the place of the skull in the Hebrew tongue, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. Pilate was mocking the Jewish folk. This was their wish. He was supposed to be their savior but they rejected him. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. And we'll make sure you weren't going to miss it, baby, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, hey, don't put the king of the Jews up there. He just said he was the king. He ain't the real king. And let me tell you something. Whether you obey Christ or not, he's still king. He's the king of salvation. Man don't have nothing to offer to get us in contact with him. Amen, somebody. Pilate replied, nope. I have written what I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Jesus didn't wear no dress, he wore a robe. Amen, somebody. Amen. So they said, rather than tearing it up, since it's just one solid piece, let's throw dice for it. Y'all see this? This fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garment among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross, can y'all see the picture? Where Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, dear woman, here is your son. Going to be all on y'all in just a minute. Said to his disciple, here is your mother. From then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. What mission? What mission? Jesus says, but how? He came to die, but why? He not only came to die for the sin of every man, he came to bring into existence the church. And we belittle it with man-made organizations claiming they belong to Christ. 
He said, it's finished. And to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge upon, didn't even put it in a cup. Soaked a sponge on it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. Bloody, blistered lips with vinegar on them. Jesus had tasted it. He said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head gave up his spirit. Now listen, it was the day of preparation, verse 31, and the Jewish leaders didn't want any bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath. A very special Sabbath because it was Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say not one of his bones will be broken. They will look upon the one which they pierced. The church of the living God was commandeered with his own blood. Jesus had to become a man so he could die. You couldn't kill him without him becoming a man. And he died to purchase the church with his own blood so that through the church, the processes of, of salvation might be completed. Are y'all with me? First Peter chapter 1. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm trying to hear up y'all. First Peter chapter 1 verse 19. The Bible says it was the precious blood of Christ. The sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. And you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins, amen, when you obeyed the truth. Listen, do y'all hear that? When, is you, when are we cleansed from our sin? When we obey the truth. You hadn't been told the truth. So now, you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. We, we working on that, ain't we, church? Amen. We was all dirty and filthy, and then we done been thrown in the washing machine together. We might as well just hug on up and get close. Amen, somebody. Amen. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Amen. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you the church came from heaven? It comes from the eternal living word of God. And the living God has a church that he speaks about in his word. Are you with me? Now, how did we end up? I'm closing my lesson now, y'all. I'm closing my lesson now. Y'all, 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 y'all can go home. Y'all can go home and look at it again. Amen, somebody. How did, how did this happen? 45,000 denominations that claim Christ Jesus. How'd this happen? Well, the scripture says that being ignorant of God's righteousness, we go about to establish our own. And then in your Bible, Romans chapter 10, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 15. Listen to this. Listen to this. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Listen to Jesus now. They worship me in vain. Why? Because they teach as doctrine 
the precepts of me. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me, let me, let me read this other one right quick. We're going we're gonna to look at this one more time. Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse number 5. So the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. They, they ain't just wash their hand, they had a ceremony, child. Right. Right. They probably would have freaked out if they saw you with some hand sanitizer. <laughs> Verse number six, Jesus replied, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They, their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. You ignore God's law and substitute it with your own. Now, you're going to tell me the United Methodist Church belonged to God when they sat there and said two men, a, 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 a homosexual preacher can preach? That's God's church? So what we have is folks that are trying to hold on to what they've always believed and what's been passed down in their family. Folk are fighting tooth and nail so that the, the United Methodist can be what John Wesley made it. He never had authority to build a church. Smive never had authority to build a church. Boniface III never had authority to build a church. Not from God. 45,000 denominations. Now, I wouldn't do it. Not for the life of me. But you know I could go start a church tomorrow. Y'all don't believe me? I go down there and get a business license and, 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 and think of me a name that sounds holy and I can go right on down there uh, uh, to the courthouse. Start me a church tomorrow. In the last few years, I'm coming down, y'all. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Y'all say it's all right, preacher. It ain't all right then, I guess, huh? The one you say, it ain't all right, preacher. You hear up. In the last few years, I don't know if y'all have seen it, uh, they've had... Uh, epic church. Y'all seen it? New stuff. New stuff. Church of the Highlands. New stuff. Cowboy church. New stuff. I was riding down the highway, I seen the golf church. New stuff. Well, see, y'all can recognize that because you ain't never seen it before. What I'm telling you is all these other churches have been made up by man throughout the ages, amen, somebody. And we've got families that's been in these churches all this time. Baptist church, made up. We got a new one right here in Athens, don't we? Y'all don't want me to say it, do you, because you got family members over there? Huh? That's how it is. Y'all don't want me to say nothing right, B. Why you, why, you, why, why you picking on them? I'm telling you, it's new stuff. At the oasis over there, new stuff. And the Bible says it would start from you, people that know the truth. Would run out with a strange doctrine so folks could run behind them. And then we got folks in the Lord's church that don't honor it. When you tell them folk have been disfellowshipped, keep putting them on programs. Keep using them. When God get through, what side will we be on? Oh, well, preacher, you ain't perfect. I sure ain't. Not by a stretch of your imagination. I ain't preaching nobody's false doctrine. I came out of the nomination. God saved me with his truth. And before I go out there and lie in the name of God, I sit down somewhere. Y'all all right? Jesus is the only one with authority to build the church. What's the name of it? Christ Church. 
the church belonging to Christ? Is it a denomination or a non-denomination? Well, when you ask that question, I don't mean no harm. Uh, a word like ignorance, we use it as something to belittle someone. Now, ignorance just means you don't know. So when you ask questions like that right there, that means you don't know. And it tells me you have an ignorant faith. Don't get mad at me. Because the Bible says at a time, this ignorance, God looked over it. But now his son then came down here and died on the cross for us and established his own church. If you don't want that, God said, I ain't looking over it no more. And when I put down my wrath, you will be left to burn in the devil's hell. There's someone here that wants to be a part of the people of God. Someone here that wants to be a part of the church of the living God. Who is the living God? Jesus. God in the flesh. The one who the blood and the water came out of. It's his church. And I can't make no rules or regulations in his church. We got to do what Christ said. Amen, somebody? Y'all all right in here? You come by hearing the word. You got to hear it now. And you got to hear what he said. 45,000 denominations. I wonder what they're saying. If one of us can't hardly tell it right, how 45,000 going to tell it right? You talk about some gossip. You got to believe the pure message, the message that Christ bought from heaven. The church was, was wrapped up in him until it was time for it to be revealed. Amen, somebody? Then you got to repent. Listen, it's, it's a whole lot going on. People done told me this, they done told me that, now you telling me this. Listen, go study. And if you're struggling that bad with it, get with somebody to help you see what God's word is saying. Amen. You make sure they got their Bible. Make sure they're telling you in context. And make sure they ain't adding nothing to it or taking nothing out. Right. Stop making excuses. Had a fellow tell me one time, I just don't understand the Bible. Well, when somebody willing to sit down with you and talk to you about it, what's the problem? Do you want to understand? Or do I feel better in my ignorance? God's still going to get you. Just because you ignore him don't mean he ain't going to come. Amen, somebody. You got to confess Christ to be the son of the living God. When Jesus is preached, you're going to hear about the church. Amen, somebody. You be like Acts chapter 2, amen, somebody, uh, play, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. But there was only one church. There was only one gospel that saved. Now it's 45,000 denominations. That's man's doing. And notice it didn't say y'all not going to go to heaven or Jesus told them folks I don't know you because they were devil worshiping. You look, they, they worship the devil. Well, you might as well worship him too if you ain't obeying Christ. Amen. He said, you worshiping me in vain. I'm trying to get through. Hush, boy, hush, boy, hush. You got to be baptized for the remission of your sin. God will add you to the body of Christ, and then you got to live like you got some sense now. Amen. And you continue to learn of Christ and his way. That's why he says, so we'll know how to behave in the household of faith. Amen, somebody. You, now listen, Christians outside the church. Yes, someone can obey the gospel with right teaching, and God can add them to the church, and they can leave and go somewhere else. Thereby, they are a Christian. Amen. But they're only setting themselves up to fall from grace if they go and they attach themselves to a man-made church. Because that church can't teach them the second teaching. And you can find out and learn all the stuff God wants us to know about how his grace works. The spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. How we worship. 
You can't get that from nowhere else because God didn't give it to him. Right. Satan copies. And let me tell you one more thing about Satan. I put a Facebook post out there this week. Y'all know Satan like to do his deception in the open. Have y'all noticed that? I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. He likes to do his deception in the open. He don't want to the, 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 the trick you and you never know what happened. He wants to do it right there in your face. So he can do it in God's face. And we can look just that most silly because he sat right there and told us what he was going to do to us and then did it. Satan does his deception in the open. He get more praise out of it that way. Amen, somebody. You can stand right now as we sing songs of encouragement. Giving life through his word.